In a previous tutorial, we looked at pretest loops, where a condition is tested before carrying out an operation, therefore being pretest. In this video, we're going to look at using a post test loop, where we want it to happen at least once and then check to see if we need to do it a second time. So, in this case, we're going to be using the do and the loop again, but we want to loop until i is equal to 5. So once again, it will come in, it will do the operation in here and then check to see if we need to do it again. So until i equals 5, it will keep doing this loop. So what do we want to do? First of all, we want to debug, right line, and we want to output what the contents of i is. So we're going to come in, this is our entry, so i is equal to 0, do, so debug right line, so it should output 0 and then loop until i equals 5. Now at the moment we don't have a terminator so we need to put that in because at the moment i will never change because it's always going to be equal to 0. So we're going to go i's plus equal and then we're just going to go 1. So this is known as our terminator and therefore i will keep incrementing and will one day be 5 and therefore let us out of the loop. So let's see this work. So we see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we don't see 5. Now the reason we don't see 5 is because when 1 is added to 4, it becomes 5. Loop until i equals 5. i is now 5, so it stops. So we never go back up to display. If we wanted to see 5, if we move this above the output, we'll never see 0. 0 gets us in. So it will come in, 0 plus 1 will be 1, it will display 1, keep going, then it will increment to 5, display 5, and then terminate, because 5 is now, i is now equal to 5. So let's have a look at this working. And you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we don't see 0. Now this also works for the while loop. So we could actually say while i is less than 5, which is much the same thing. So first time through, it's going to be 0, then it becomes 1, displays 1, while 1, well, i is 1, and that's less than 5. So it'll keep going until it's equal to 5. So when we run the condition now, we can then see this. Now we can actually expand this program to do a dice roll. So under initialize, I'm going to put in randomize. And then also I'm going to declare dim i random number as an integer and then what we can do is roll a dice every time we come in here so we can actually say i random number is equal to maths dot ceiling bracket rnd bracket bracket times six so this will roll a dice for us from one to six it will then add one to our count we can debug or debug right line i which will give us like one and then I want to use a concatenator so I can actually put a space in and maybe a colon and then I can actually put the dice roll in so I random number and then what I want to do at the end is I want to roll this dice so while I is not equal to a six so this will keep rolling the dice and showing us the dice rolls until it gets to a 6. So in this case here we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it actually took 6 dice rolls to get to 6. Let's roll it again. 6 dice rolls again. In this case here it took 6 again. Oh, and the reason why it's taking 6 is because while well, i's not equal to 6. So let's change the random number. Let's change this to i random number. So while the random while the random number is not equal to six, so we'll keep rolling the dice until we don't have a six. So you can see the six terminated it there. The six terminated it there. This time it took ten rolls to get a six. This one took five rolls. 
This one took 28 rolls before we got a 6. So we could use while it's not equal to 6, or we could change this to be until I ran number equals 6. So now it's equal to 6, and now it's equal to 6. If we had two dice, we could check to see if we've got a double. So let's make a second dice. So we call this I ran a number, and we're going to create another one. I ran a number two. And we're going to use the exact same line of code to create a random number. But change that to a two. And we've got I ran a number and we're going to concatenate this out a little bit further with a space and i random with i random number two and we want to roll this until i random number equals i random number two so this is going to keep going until we get a double now so i random number must equal i random number two so i'm rolling two dice and i want to see how many times i've got to roll two dice until i get a double First time, I got it in one go. Then it took 15, 6, 9, 2, 5, etc. So we can actually use the until to help us or while, etc. to make sure that we can keep looping. But using a post-test loop ensures that we at least do the loop once before going back and checking if we need to do it a second time. Post-test loop is used a lot for in games where do you want to play again? So you at least want to play the game once and then they'll ask do you want to play again? And if yes, it will go back again. So I hope you found this tutorial useful in using post-test conditions in your programming.